Hey guys, this is Dario again from Skydive Readings and today we're gonna talk about how to teach landing out and how to land out. So this is both for coaches and instructor and also for skydivers that wanna review the landing out procedure. Just like any other skill in skydiving, let's break it up into parts. So what are the three parts of landing out? What's the first thing that you have to do? Exactly. You need to make a decision that you're not gonna land at the drop zone anymore, but you're gonna land somewhere else. What's the second thing you gotta do? Exactly. You have to pick a new alternate landing area. Once you've done that, once you've picked your alternate, what's the last thing that you can do to still make sure that you have some sort of plan? Yep, you said it. You're gonna pick your pattern that you planned at the drop zone and copy it over into your new landing area. So now let's talk about each of them. First of all, that uh, decision-making process, you might have heard of different rules. You might have heard of the 50-50 rule or halfway down, halfway there. At your drop zone, you might use a set altitude, let's say no lower than 2,000 feet, I'm gonna make a decision, or no lower than my decision altitude, I'm gonna decide where I'm gonna land. Whatever is your procedure, or whatever you teach your student, make sure that it's something tangible and timely. You wanna avoid finding yourself at a thousand feet not knowing where to land. As far as speaking an alternate landing area, it's fairly simple. What are we looking for in that alternate landing area? We want it to be, first of all, clear of obstacle, as wide as it can be, and ideally flat. Make sure that when you find a field, you also scan for power lines, which are often hard to see. So either if you see some poles in the middle of a field or you're landing close to a road, always assume that there are power lines. And then as far as copying your pattern, that's self-explanatory. You had a plan already to have a downwind, crosswind and final. So all that you're doing is taking it from the drop zone and putting it on your new landing area. And my last piece of advice is to not forget and not forget to tell your student that when you're Finding an alternate landing area, you also look behind you. Oftentimes we get stuck and fixated on looking in front of us, whether we're fighting the wind or trying to get back to the drops and running with the wind, we forget to look behind us. We might have a lot of bad spots in front of us and maybe a big beautiful field behind us. So hopefully this refreshed your memory on landing out procedures or it gave you an example of a lesson plan on keeping the landing out procedures simple, short, and specific when you teach it to your student. Make sure that you follow us if you're interested in more videos like this. I'll see you soon.